I guess, you know, we wanted to work on a project that connected with audiences in a really direct way. That kind of was really participatory in the fullest sense of the word. So the sense in we were authoring this project together. The artists, Olaf, me, the dancers, Jamie XX, that we were going to work together on something. Today we're at the Park Avenue Armory in New York City to meet acclaimed choreographer Wayne McGregor and renowned visual artist Olafur Eliasson to talk about their latest project, Tree of Codes. Wayne and Olafur, along with electronic producer and composer Jamie XX, have come together to create a new take on multimedia dance performance, inspired by Jonathan Safran Foer's work of the same name. Tree of Codes takes the audience on an immersive visual journey that combines modern dance, visual art, and music in a way we've never seen before. What is Tree of Codes? I mean, it, it was a text, sort of a sculpture that you reinterpreted. Why were you drawn to that original text? I don't know if you've seen it, it's a brilliant um, book. It's kind of a sculptural object, which is it's basically a story, a Bruno Schultz story that's been cut down, reduced down, redacted um, to a completely different story. It's a, a, it's a series of pages that have huge holes or volumes where words fly off the page into your imagination, into your face. It's kind of a, a book that has no rules. If you think about it, it's called uh, Street of Crocodiles, the Bruno Schulz text. And if you remove letters, you can write Tree of Codes, mm -hmm. right? So the title is even in the other title. And Wayne proposed me that the book would probably have the potential to carry us into a new type of collaboration. Once you had that idea in your head, how did you go about working together and building this dance hybrid installation? Well, I think we just spent a bit of time together. That's the first part, you know, and a bit of time with, with Jamie XX. Obviously, he's done the music, a massive part of this whole project. Just to, just to start to have the conversation, what interests us, what kinds of things might actually you know, stimulate further conversations and dialogues. Um, and then you start your process. I mean, for me, physically, I, I worked in the studio just kind of choreographing those pages. I read that Jamie XX actually took Foyer's object as well and kind of inspired his music yeah. through that. He, he very early on thought of a way of building an algorithmic program that in some way played the pages that would give him a baseline in terms of rhythm that he could then um, work on top of and embroider and kind of embellish and write melody from. And I love that as an idea. I love that he was working in quite a rigorous kind of um, conceptual way. But again, that constraint released him to create these beautiful evocative kind of landscapes that are really moving. I think it's only fair to say, you know, when Jamie does the music, he doesn't just do music that follows the dance and the sets. The music, music is very physical too. It's really something that sort of hits you either through the feet, as you would say, or mm. touching, stroking your neck. Uh, and, and I like that very much because I, as an artist, identify very much with that. I don't think of art as being an object. I think of art being the relationships between all the dancers, the audience, the audience and the stage, the stage of the music. So it's really one thing. The, the dance and the, the choreography has this idea of well, you look at it and then you wonder, wow, there is another story on the inside of it. And that's why I've used several mirrors, because sometimes you see dancers in front of a mirror, but you realize the play is actually in the mirror. The dancers are kind of just helping the play from the perspective of the mirror to unfold. So we're bringing the, the audience to work a little bit. They're kind of not just looking, they're also wondering, am I seeing the dancer or the reflection of the dancer? And I think this is a lovely exercise because the, the audience are not really here to, to consume passively, just like, oh, yeah. sit there. So it's, it's kind of hard work to come and see this. So I think the advantage of that is that you sit in the audience in a state of preparedness forward, right? So you're not sure, you're curious, you're kind of forward. So your energy, your physical energy in the auditorium is matched or very connected to the physical energy of those performers on stage. And usually that gap is quite wide. Watching the performance in Manchester and seeing the behaviour of the audience there, atypically they really were on the verge of wanting to burst out of their own skins. I could see it. I think of my artworks as potential relationships. And if they're successful, they will allow for people to identify with the space in a way where they see themselves. 
So we all know the feeling when reading a book or looking at a work of art or, 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 or a piece of theatre, you go like, oh, I know that feeling. That is me. I am the one in the piece. Finally, somebody is putting form or language to something that I've emotionally been engaged in, but I haven't quite found a way to express it yet. Obviously, Tree of Codes premiered at the Manchester International Festival, but now we're here at the New York Armory. Let's talk about the space. Well, first of all, it's incredibly exciting at the Armory because it's, it's almost like a reversal of what is a normal theater. Because when people enter the room, they first see the stage from the back. And this means there is that slight sensation of you being the performer, because you're almost you know, walking mm. to your seat by going over the stage. It's a little bit like, you know, going to a magician's show, starting seeing how all the tricks are made, but that does not make it any less interesting. Are these sorts of hybrid performances, collaboration, something that you both will continue to do? Silence, we both no, like no, silence. No, no, absolutely. I am, I am um, when I was seeing how Wayne was working, I immediately wanted to be a choreographer. And then when I heard the music, I said, I also want to be a musician. So that is maybe my problem, actually. But the truth is, I don't necessarily also see a, a kind of a boundary between yeah. choreography, making art, making music. It's not really what language you speak, it is what you say with the language. I mean, Ulf is already a choreographer, right? So the basic principles of choreography are about space, body and time, right? And he's doing that in his work all the time. And that was one of the attractions for me of actually working with him because I wanted to have a different kind of experience of those things that I think I know, or I know from my, kind of, my, my reality. If you could sum up Tree of Codes in one sentence, just the message or the meaning, the story, how would you say it? I think I'll just say something, it's about your, your story or your narrative, it's about what you bring to it, yeah, it's not about what we're saying particularly. I just hope that the experience is a fully rounded, physical, emotional and visual experience that you sit inside. And I think this is very much what art and dance and, and, and music, I guess, so uh, can do. It is somehow sending us unthought thoughts from the future. And when they arrive at us, we realise that we were not surprised because I was about to think exactly that. And, and this is why, um, you know, this is why we should be just like kind of open-minded to the sort of more emotional trajectory that you just laid out so, so beautiful. This is just a really great and exciting experience.